Hello everybody and welcome to part three of this tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be doing is adding React and adding kind of a front end app to our project. Now this will be the most amount of setup we do in this series, so don't worry, it is slightly painful to go through all of these steps, but I just want to tell you right now, all of the code and all of the resources will be linked in the description. So if something's not working for you, you're getting frustrated, which is definitely a real possibility when going through this many steps, please just have a look at the code in the description. You can copy it and just paste it into your script and just make sure your directory structure looks the same, same as mine, because well, that will make a big difference when it comes to this setup. Anyways, we need to add react. The first thing we're going to need to do, uh, for this is we need to make sure we have NPM installed. So I'm going to open a new terminal here. You can just press the plus sign in VS code to do that. We're going to CD into our music controller main directory, and then we're just going to type NPM. Now we're not going to init a uh, NPM project yet, but just go ahead and type NPM, make sure that command works. If it does, we're good to go. If it doesn't make sure you download and install NPM and node JS. All right, now we're inside a music controller. Next thing we're going to do is actually create a new app inside of our project. So we're not going to call this one app. In fact, what we're going to call it is front end because this app is going to store the front end of our project. So what we're going to do is go Django hyphen admin start app front end like that. And now we have a front end app inside of our directory and this is where we're going to be working now. So now we're going to CD into front end. And what we're going to do is create a few folders. So the first thing we're going to do is make a static and template folder. And we're also going to make a source and components folder. Now this app right here is going to be storing all of the stuff related to our front end. So related to actually the react aspect of this project. So there's a lot of files here. This is where all the JavaScript is going to go and, and just keep that in mind. This is strictly for the front end where the API here is strictly for the back end. All right, so inside of here, first thing to do, new folder, we're going to call this one templates. And we're going to make another folder as well. We're going to call this one static. So our static folder is going to hold all of our static files. So pretty much anything that the browser would cache. And in fact, just so we can separate all of the different things inside of here, we're going to make three folders. So we're going to make the first folder. We're going to call this front end like that. This is going to store our main JavaScript bundle. You'll see how that works in a second. Now we're going to make another folder. Make sure you're highlighted over static, by the way, otherwise you'll make one inside of front end. But inside of static, another folder, we're going to call this one CSS. So now we have CSS front end and finally, one last folder. You can take a guess at what this one is going to be, but it is images. So these are the three main things we're going to store inside of the static folder, all of our CSS, all of our images, and then front end, which is just going to actually store the bundle of all of our JavaScript, which will come from our source code, which we will see in a second. Now quickly, uh, actually, yeah, we can just go ahead and make this other folder. Now let's make another folder inside of front end. This one is going to be called SRC standing for source. And then inside of source, we're going to make another folder. And this one is going to be called components. Now, when we talk about react, we have react components. Those will obviously go inside of the components folder. So hopefully that's clear, but that is what we have. That's kind of our directory structure. That's all we need for in terms of folders. Now what we're going to do is init an NPM project or whatever it is that that stands for. We're going to do NPM init hyphen Y. And what that is going to do is create a node modules, package JSON, and all the other things we need uh, for our front end project. So npm init hyphen Y. Don't worry if this like doesn't make sense to you and you've never done this before. You don't really have to know what all of these files are doing and their purpose. You just kind of have to get the setup going and then you'll be able to do all the development that you need. So we'll continue with the rest of the setup in just a second, but I need to thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is a coding interview prep platform, and I can honestly say that it's one of the main reasons I was able to land a job at Microsoft. In a matter of a few months, I was able to get extremely good at coding interview questions from following along with the great video explanations that are on the platform. If you're looking to land a software engineering job or just improve your coding ability, then go ahead and check out Algo Expert from the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. So we have our package.json inside of here. That is good. Uh, our node uh, modules folder actually should come in after we do a few things here. So now that we have that, what we need to do is install a bunch of stuff from NPM. So essentially NPM is going to store all of kind of the modules like React. It's going to store uh, Babel. It's going to store Webpack. It's going to do all the things that we need to actually transpile our code and get it ready to run in the browser. So the first thing we have here is we want to do NPM I and then Webpack and then Webpack 
hyphen CLI and then hyphen hyphen save dev. Again, don't worry too much about these commands, but this is going to install Webpack. We need Webpack. What Webpack is going to do is take all of our source JavaScript stuff. It's going to, I believe, transpile it. I, I think that's what it's called or pretty much bundle it into one single JavaScript file. Uh, and, and you'll see how that works later. But anyways, we're going to do this command. Once that's done installing, I'll be back and we will install the other things. All right, so the next thing we're going to install is Babel. Now, in case you're not sure what Babel is, essentially it will take our code and transpile it into code that is friendly with all different types of browsers. So we're going to be writing with, I believe it's ES6 or ES7 JavaScript code, which is like newer JavaScript code, uh, to put it simply. And this will just take our code and transpile it. So just kind of convert it into code that will run in older browsers. That's what Babel does for us. So it's nice to have that installed. We'll just do it at the beginning. Why not? So we don't have to deal with it later. So NPM. I and then Babel hyphen or sorry, not hyphen Babel slash core. We're also going to do Babel loader like that. There's a few other things you need to type here. So just don't press enter yet. Babel slash preset hyphen ENV and then at Babel slash. I've got to look at my other screen to remember this one. This is going to be preset hyphen react. And then I believe the last thing we have to add here is hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev. All right, so there we go. We have this line. Make sure you type it out like that. Press enter. We're going to install all those things. And once that's done, I will be back. All right, I am back. Now we have a few other things we need to install. The next one is pretty obvious. We need to install React. So we're going to say npm i react and then react hyphen dom. Once again, save dev. So let's run that. And there's about three or four more things we need to install. I'm just doing them all right now, so we don't have to come back to this later on. The next one I'm going to install is something called Material UI. This is just some pre-built components that we can use to avoid having to style the web page ourselves. Uh, so I'm going to say npm install at and then material hyphen UI slash core. Again, just some built-in components. It has some nice things like cards and grids and all that. It's kind of similar to something like Bootstrap, for example. Next, what we're going to do is say npm install, and we're going to install another thing for Babel. So we're going to say Babel slash uh, plugin, if I can spell this correctly, hyphen proposal class, and then properties <laughs> like that. Okay, so I think I spelt all that correctly. Let's just have a quick double check and let's install that. The reason we need this is so we can use async and await in our JavaScript code. It's kind of strange that we need to add that, but we do. And the last thing we need actually is two more things. Sorry, my bad. Uh, npm install react router hyphen dom. This is going to allow us not counter router. This is going to allow us to actually reroute the pages so that we can go well two different pages from a react app. So react router hyphen dom. We need that one. And the last one has to do with material UI npm install at material hyphen UI slash icons. So pretty straightforward, but we just want to get the icons from material UI. Okay, so I think just doing a scan here. That's all we need in terms of the NPM packages. Now what we need to do is set up some configuration scripts uh, that are going to actually run and kind of handle our web pack and our Babel and all of that. Now these I'm going to ask you just to copy from the links in the description. You can go to the GitHub and find the source code because they're kind of long to type out. But the first thing that we're going to do is make a new file and I'm going to call this one. Make sure it's inside of the front end app, by the way, Babel dot config dot json. Now you can actually do there's another one called dot babble RC. If you're aware of how that works, then go ahead and use that. But I'm going to use the babble dot config dot json file. If that means nothing to you, don't worry, just follow along with what I'm doing. And all we're going to do is paste this inside of here. I'm not really going to get into what all of this stuff does, but it pretty much just sets up the babble loader for us and says, hey, the presets we're using is the environment preset that's targeting node version 10. That's just because there was a bug in the version that I was using. And then at Babel uh, preset react, pretty straightforward. We're using react, so we're going to have that preset. And then the plugins, this is so we can use async and await. And remember, we just installed this thing right here, plugin proposal class properties from NPM. All right, so that is babel.config.json. You can copy that out or you can find it from, again, the GitHub or the link in the description. Next, we're going to make another file called webpack.config.json json or dot js sorry so let's go inside a front end let's make a new file let's do webpack dot config dot js 
All right, so I'm in webpack.config.json. A reminder that web, what Webpack does is actually bundle all of our JavaScript into one file. We can bundle it into multiple files, but anyways, it just takes all this JavaScript code we have and makes a bundle of it and then serves that one file to the browser and, and you'll see how that works. But anyways, let's just paste this in. This is the configuration for Webpack. We need a way to determine, okay, where actually is our JavaScript file? Where is the entry JavaScript file? And where should we output this file to? We're gonna take all of our JavaScript, we're gonna read through all of it and then we're gonna output it somewhere. Where should I output it? Well, I'm gonna output it where I put right here. Now we're saying our entry point is gonna be in the source directory, which we have inside of here, and then uh, dot or sorry, slash index.js. Now this is a relative path, which pretty much means we're just starting from wherever this webpack.config.js file is, which is inside of the front end directory. Next, we have output. Now we're using path.resolve. This is getting the current directory that we're in, so the front end directory, and then saying, okay, and again, relative path, we want to put this inside of the static front end folder. So if we have a look at static here and we have a look at the front end folder, that's where our output file is going to be. The file name is name.js. We might have to change this. I forget, but I'm going to leave it with the brackets right now. All right, then we have module and we have some rules. I'm not gonna talk about this, but you can see it's saying just simply exclude bundling the node modules uh, folder. And we're gonna use the Babel loader when we do all of this. Next, we have optimization. What minimize is doing is taking our JavaScript and minimizing it, so just making it smaller. The reason we would wanna do this is because if we have a lot of JavaScript, it's gonna take a long time to load in the browser. So if we can get rid of all the you know white spaces and all the other information in the file that we don't need, that is best. So it's just minimizing for us. And then plugins, this is doing a very similar thing in terms of optimization. I'm not really going to talk about this. You're welcome to look up the define plugin uh, if you like. All right. So now we have webpack.config.js. That is all good. And now let's move on to the next step. So now what we're going to do is go to package.json. And what we need to do inside of here is where it says scripts, we actually need to add two scripts here, which are going to run this webpack uh, thing that we just set up essentially. So inside of here, the first thing we're going to add is we're going to add the dev script. And this is going to be equal to web, oops, and I need double quotations. It's going to be equal to webpack hyphen hyphen mode development and then hyphen hyphen watch. What this is going to do is pretty much tell us, hey, we want Webpack to run. We want to run in the development mode and we want it to be in watch mode. Now, just like the server that we were running before, so that Python script, uh, this will just watch for changes to our JavaScript files and then automatically recomp uh, recompile or rebundle or whatever you want to call it, uh, the output JavaScript file, so that bundled file, so that we can just refresh our browser and everything will be all good. Next, we're going to add a build script. So I think I need to separate this with a comma. I'm going to say build colon and double quotation marks, webpack hyphen hyphen mode. Only thing we're going to change here is it's going to be production and we're not going to add the watch. Uh, so that is all good. And I think we can move forward now. All right, so let's get rid of that. And now actually let's go inside of our SRC file and let's make our entry JavaScript file. So inside of SRC, I'm make a new file. I'm going to call this index.js like that. So we're pretty much done our setup at this point uh, in terms of all of this random gibberish stuff that doesn't make any sense with the Babel and Webpack and all that. But what we need to do now is actually make it so that our uh, Django app will render a page that React will take control of. So this is, seems kind of strange. And if you haven't used Django or React before, then this isn't really going to make much sense. But the idea here is that we're going to have our Django application render a template, which is just going to be some vanilla plain HTML. And then our React code is going to take over that template and actually fill it in. So we will technically have the Django backend actually rendering the template, but then React will manage it after that. So you'll see how that works when we start doing it. But I'm just going to go inside of the templates folder right here, and I'm going to make another folder. <laughs> this is strange again, called front end. And inside of front end, I'm going to make a file and I'm just going to call this index.html. Now inside of here, we're just going to fill in a few things. So we'll just make our standard uh, HTML file. So doc type HTML. We'll make our HTML opening tag, HTML closing tag. Let's make our head opening tag and head closing tag. And same thing with body. Okay. Now inside of head, we'll add the standard stuff. So we'll add our meta tag and we'll say 
char set equals UTF eight. We'll add another meta tag inside of here. We'll say name equals viewport like that. And then the content equals. And again, you guys can copy this stuff from the link in the description if you don't want to type it out, but width equals device hyphen width comma initial scale equals one. Okay. Our snippets came in there and oops, we want to close this meta tag at the end there. Do we need any other meta tags? I think that's it for our meta tags, but now we'll add a title tag inside of title. We will simply say, you know, music controller or whatever you want the title to be. I'm going to add something inside of here, which I'll discuss in a second. It's going to say load static. What this will do is load our static files, our static folder, which will allow us essentially to look at the JavaScript code that we're going to be bundling. Now, we also need to add a few other things in here. I'm just going to copy them in. And again, I'm going to ask that you guys just copy this from the link in the description because it's not really worth me typing out the URL. Uh, but here, let's let's zoom out a little bit so we can read all of this. These are just some scripts and style sheets that we need. So remember, we're using Material UI. This is kind of like a component library that comes with some cool built in stuff, but we need to import their style sheet. We also need to import our own style sheet, which we'll create in just one second. And then we need the font for Material UI. We also need jQuery. Uh, I believe I have two versions of jQuery, jQuery here, so I'm going to get rid of the one that's the lower version. I don't know why I have two there. Uh, and that should be good. All right, so now that we have that, we're going to have to add a few small things, but this should be pretty straightforward. We're going to go into the body. We're going to make a div. I'm going to say this div ID equals, and let's go main. Let's end that div. And then we're going to make another div. This is the div that React's actually going to take care of. We're going to say div ID equals app. So the idea here is that we have this main div. I'll talk about why we have that later when we start doing some more styling. And then we have this app div. And what will happen is, well, our React code is going to go inside of this div. So React will kind of grab this app div, and this is where it will render all of its components and show everything on the screen. Last thing we need to do, I think I can actually type this one out just at the end of the body. We're going to make a script tag and we're going to load um, the main JS file that we're going to be using as our bundle. So we're going to say source equals and then inside of here, we're going to go percent percent static like that and I believe the quotations can stay there. And then we're going to do another two quotation marks, strangely enough, and go front end slash main dot JS. So what this is saying is essentially like whatever the static folder is, which we've loaded here, let's use that. And then we're going to combine that with front end slash main JS. And we're going to load that script. Now I need to end the script tag. So I think I can do that, but just note that what this is doing is it's going to be grabbing our bundled JavaScript, which will hold all of our React code from static front end and loading that inside of here so that this actually works right? and React can actually take over this div. Again, this all will come together as we go through, but I'm just trying to explain it step by step. Okay, so now that we have index.html, that is all good. Uh, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, so let's actually now render the view or render this template, and then we'll write a little bit of React code. And I'm noticing that for some reason these tags aren't working, uh, so I think I need to just end the script. Ah, yeah, I can end the script like that. Guess I can't do the slash to end it. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go into the views file in our front end. Now, what we're going to do inside of the views of our front end may seem a little strange, but we need to just render this index template and then let React take care of it. So inside of here, I'm going to say define index. I'm going to take a request and I'm going to take star args and star star quargs. And then I'm going to return a render, which you can see is up there of a template. So we're going to render request. And then inside of here, we're going to say front end like that slash index.html. Now what this is going to do is essentially allow us to just render this index template that we have right here. And then React will take care of that and start rendering things inside of this. Notice that the folder is called front end. And what am I referencing? Front end slash index.html, which is the name of my HTML file. What render will do is it will take the request, it will take the template, and it will simply return that HTML to uh, whatever sent the request. All right, so now that we have that, we just need to make a URL for this. So let's go to URLs. And in fact, we don't have a URLs file in here, so we can create a new one. Let's go new file, urls.py. 
And now let's go to music controller. Let's go into this URL. And now let's add some more URLs in here. So let's say path. And we're just going to have an empty path. And now that is going to go to, you guessed it, the front end dot URLs. So whenever we type a URL that's not API or not admin, we want to send it to front end dot URLs. That way we can then handle the URLs from the front end. Uh, and the reason we need that is because we just, you'll see in a second, it's hard to describe until we get further into the app, but the front end here has its own URLs as opposed from the API URLs. And those URLs are kind of forward facing. That's what the user will actually see. Whereas the API ones will be used by the react code, uh, kind of internally in a sense. So anyways, let's go to this URLs file. I'm just going to actually copy this one because it makes it a bit easier. We'll paste it inside of here. Again, we don't need the admin. We don't need the include. So we can get rid of all of that. And now we have slash or empty path. And what we're going to do here is say from dot views import. And I think we named it index. Yeah, I believe it was named index. And we'll simply put index right there. So now we will render the index template whenever we have a blank path that will kind of be our home page, quote unquote. All right, we're getting very close to being done. I know this is, is pretty painful, but this is what is required and what we have to do. Next, what we're going to do is simply make our first React component and show that on the screen. And hopefully then we will be done with this setup in this tutorial. So let's go into components. Let's make a component called app.js. And now let's start writing some React code. So don't worry if this doesn't make any sense to you right now. We will discuss this more later. We're going to import React comma component from the react module like that. Then we'll have a semicolon and then we will import render from react dom react dom standing for obviously the HTML dom that we're going to be using. And then what we can do is make a class. We're going to say export default class app extends component. This is just how you set up a class in react. The export default we could do somewhere else, but I'm just going to do it right in line so that this app is the default export from this file. I'm going to make a constructor that's going to take props and then we're going to call the super using those props. Again, you don't have to know what this means. This is just the initial setup. And then finally, we'll make a render method and we'll say render and we will return just for simplicity's sake, we'll return an h1 tag. So we'll say h1 testing react code. And no, nope, let's end the h1 tag. Like, come on, give me the ending h1 tag. Okay, so I think that is good. Now that we have that, all we need to do is actually render this component inside of that div in index HTML. So in case you're unfamiliar with React, what happens is we make a main component that component will return something like whatever is going to exist in that place. And then we just put that component in a div or in some ID container. And then that way it will have whatever is here inside of, in our case, the app container. So to do this, we need to access the app container, which is pretty straightforward. We're just going to say app, uh, I guess app div equals, and we'll have to put a const before this. So const app div equals document dot get element by ID and inside of here we'll simply use app. Now what we can do is render the app component inside of the app div. Now we're very, very close to done. We have the app component. We just need to now put this into essentially our index.js file. And the way that we can actually get this to work is we can simply say import app from and then dot slash components slash app. That should be it. Let me make sure that I did this correctly. And now our entry file is importing this file. So when we import this file, it will run this code and it will render this app in this index.html template. Now, what we have to do is we have to actually, first of all, make sure that our server is running properly because it looks like I messed something up. So let's run this here. And okay, so our server is running. Now what we need to do is run that script that we put inside of our package JSON. So the webpack module development watch, what should happen is it should look at our index.js file. It should see that we are importing app. It should bundle this stuff together. It should output something to static front end and that file should be called main.js. Although I think I'm gonna have to change something to get that to work. And then <laughs> we'll go to the URL endpoint and we should see this popping up. I, I know again, confusing, but let's run this. 
Uh, oops, we're going to do npm run dev. The way this works is if we have a look at our package.json, the script is named dev. Run is running a script. So we say npm run dev. If we want to run build, we would type build. Let's run this and let's see if we get any errors or if this works. OK, so that actually worked. You can see that by default, it calls our file main.js, which is good. That's what we want it to be. And now if we have a look inside a front end, what do we get? We have this main.js file with all of this gibberish, which is simply the bundled up JavaScript. So that is how that works. And now watch if I save this file. Notice that the watcher ran, recompiled the thing, and we're good to go. So now if all of this worked well, and I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't, we can go here to the home page. And oh, template does not exist at slash. All right, so we're getting this error saying template does not exist. I just had a quick look into this, and it's a very silly mistake on my point or on my part. We need to go into settings.py and we need to add the front end app to our installed applications. I forgot to do that. In fact, I think I passed by them. Uh, but if we go to, yeah, if we go to installed apps, you can see I have an added front end inside of here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll do it the same way we did before. So we'll say front end dot apps dot front end config. All right, so now that should be in our installed apps and saying it does not contain front end config. Oh, let's just save that one more time, rerun it and all looks good. Okay, so now with any luck, if we go back here and we refresh, this should be working. And there we go, we get testing react code. So there we go. We have our component working. React is working fine. Now we have both these scripts going in watch mode. And all we have to do is just start developing. We can write all of our react related stuff and it will show up on this page. Now, obviously still gets a little bit more complicated after this, but that is the bulk of the setup. I apologize if this was kind of all over the place, but it is hard to explain this stuff. And while well, I hope that you guys were able to get it working. If any issues, please do leave a comment again, code in the description. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.